What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mike and Max Off-Road Podcast. We're brought to you by Keep It Simple Off-Road. I'm your host, Mike Austin. And I'm Max Krause, and we're taking you from the garage to the trail. Right. Boom. And uh, last episode or last week, we missed an episode. Yes. So be prepared, bro, because we have two weeks of content to spew out in a few minutes. <laughs> this is a 10-minute episode? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it, it's worth the wait. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was worth the wait. Def- I hope so. Right. I know you definitely did a lot. I did a ton. We're both working a lot. Yep. So that that yeah, we can I'll take all the blame of us not getting that last one out because um I was definitely I did the we did the outback run and yeah. then then slammed with work. I had zero time to even get over here to the studio and then I, I was trying little bits, but by the time I was trying to pack for the Go Devil run. Yep. No time. No time. Then I got back from the Go Devil run around ten o'clock. Oh, so Sunday. Sunday night. Yeah. Damn. And then had up and work at 5 a.m. Monday morning. So you don't look all sunburnt. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause, yeah. You know what? I work outside. So uh, literally the, I get the heat easy. really didn't even bother me at yeah. all. I'm okay with heat, but I, d- I definitely sunburn if I don't cover up well. Yeah. I don't really have that issue for yeah. some reason. Hmm. I, I mean, but I was using like sunscreen and stuff. Oh, good. One of the people on um, her uh, one um, Ian's girlfriend or friend or okay. whatever. I, I think her name is. Yardy, Yadi, Yadi, maybe. Anyway, she's an awesome chick from Venezuela. Nice. She made little grab bags for everybody. That was really cool and had sunscreen in them. Nice. So, oh, that's cool. And these really, um, really cool inspirational like pop things that I really dug. Huh. And it was just like pop this, and it was an inspiration. Pops quote. in your face, and then you're happy. No, but it was a neat little gadget, you know, gadget. And we what had. It, what we is had, it? It was like a little saying, like a fortune cookie, but oh, for fun. Okay. You know. Nice. And then it had like were um, they like funny sayings. No, more oh, inspiration. inspirational. inspirational. Yeah, it was kind of setting the tone. She's like, let's set the tone for the weekend. We're going to have a great time, mm. which we'll get into that later at the main topic. That. I would have crushed that cookie on the ground with my foot. Right, <laughs> at the main topic. Look, if I go up too high, I go out of the scene. That's okay. I'll stay hunched. Just, just hunch real yeah, low. Yeah, I'm going to hunch instead of walking over there. But um, so lot. I know. So this is going to be Mike heavy. Yeah. Know what I mean? Because Max has pretty much been working, so. All right, I'll be back in like 40 minutes. So you just want to go ahead and spew all that out? No, because one of our – hey, this is a good point. Because in one of our reviews, the um, we w- the guy said, hey, we don't talk to ourselves. We're not a bunch of stupid talking heads to ourselves, which is part of this review, right? Nice. Oh, you're so, going to read it right now? Yeah, but nice. hold on. So let's bring this in. So this, ladies and gentlemen, we had the hands down yeah. greatest review ever written. Yep. I honestly believe that, right? So we'll bring it in, Harold. I don't like, know if this is gonna it, work. It not only sounded good; it was it was actually well written. Yeah, like well, like I would have, I would struggle to write something that well. Was it you that told me this guy's got some language? I think it was or, Steve. Okay, yeah. I think Steve's like he's a linguistics. Yeah, major. linguistic. Right. <laughs> so I'm gonna read this review because it sets the bar for all other podcast nice. reviews you, and you other. You know all the words? Yeah. Okay. Just... Hold on. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna try something right here. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. The um, but hold on. Because this is the greatest review ever written, <laughs> if you know, right? I'm just going to play this intro to this. Hold on. This I, is the greatest and best song in the Review. <laughs> that that came off way better in my head. Yeah. I, I, I get you, though. Tribute. Okay, it's tribute. Oh. Okay, anyway. At any rate, <laughs> is that the legal uh, amount of um, song stealing that we can do? That Isn't one that is like allowed. 10 seconds? Yeah. So tenacious D greatest song ever written. Oh, I nice. think that was appropriate at this time. Nice for this review. Okay, <clears throat> ready? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is from our the greatest review ever written. <laughs> Let me tell you about two of the coolest dudes on the internet and airwaves in the industry currently, the Mike and Max Off Road Podcast. I don't normally spout out about much in the way of reviews or recommendations, but if you do not know of them, definitely check them out. They don't have ads. I hope to someday have ads. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they don't talk to themselves. Thanks, Max, for being here. Right, and the good stuff. Per- that's here. It's good stuff. Prepared to be entertained with trail stories, tech talk, daily struggles and triumphs about their own lives, hilarious stories, making fun of each other and their friends, Max's German mom making fun of people that use two hands to drink 60-ounce beers at dinner, motorcycle wrecks, crazy neighbor stories, breakdown trail fixes, the list goes on and on. It's the same BS that happens between you and your buddies while that one guy that you're waiting to show up late tries to get uh, to get it together before the trail ride and you're waiting with your friends. 
Even if you aren't into podcasts, catch them on YouTube over at Kimo Simple Lab Road. He didn't put that eye out of that. Uh, so if you're between shows on Motor Trend or you're currently go-to magazine is more into overlanding than you are and you need to refresh hilarious, relatable content, then uh, to feed your new addiction, find them anywhere. You normally find them a great podcast, YouTube, subscribe, follow, like is. Anyway, you get the rest. That was... Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, sir. I think if you go like this, it sounds like a lot of claps. <laughs> what, just what, beat that, the what a cool out of me. review. Honestly, I think I'm going to change that to yeah. our details, like info list. Yeah. I, I was shocked that you struggled with proper, I think was the word. Proper? Oh. You're like, p -p 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 -p. yeah, I suck at reading. And then, like an <laughs> idiot, it's, yeah. you guys made fun of my shit being so big. I made it oh, so made little it again that I can't see it for nothing, man. That's funny. I love when you look at someone, you just glance over. And then their phone is like, it has maybe two words and they're on top of each other. You know, yeah. you're like, God. Like, what the hell, bro? Like, I was like, isn't that what hey. they all look like? I had forgot that they look so small and B. I had it changed. <laughs> I don't know. You're scrolling to get away from the word, across the yeah. word. <laughs> hey, while we're on that crap too, this folks, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everybody that's put in their orders for their uh, drum barrel winch cover that covers the line and protectors. Yeah. I got tons of reviews. Thanks to Steve over at Total Off-Road Podcast. Hooked us up. You can now find these over at shit. Crawleroffroadropes.com. Oh, okay. Crawleropes.com. Damn. Crawleroffroadropes.com. Something like that. I'll put the link in the description. At any rate, he's selling them over there on his website as well. You can also get them over at Keep It Simple Off-Road. But uh, thank you for all the huge orders of, or all the orders have been coming in lately. Uh, yeah, thanks. that's awesome. Yeah, it really is awesome. I never thought I'd ever. <laughs> I just never promoted <laughs> these for some dumbass. Well, I know why, but I just never promoted them. But at any rate, yeah, if you need a cover to only cover your winch line, so your cover your winch still looks good. Yeah. <laughs> right after we talk about, it, we don't have ads. But this is my ad, dude. This is my shit. So <laughs> sorry, Chris. Yeah. But we do that on purpose, anyways. Like that's why you say this is brought to you by Keep It Simple Off Road. Yeah. Yeah, because we're uh, theoretically paying for it currently. Keep it simple, footing a lot of the bills for like equipment. At least this year so far. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to Maybe next send year. that over to you. But yeah, so thanks for those orders and go get one if you need one. Yep. Protect it from the sun. Feet, the sun. Okay, move on. Let's get over that shit. All right, what next, homie? You Wheeling. Do you did you do anything, Jeep? I have not done anything. I have been working like six days a week, ten plus hours a day. So I have done zero. I did see somewhere in one of the chats you said you got a solar eclipse or solar uh, yeah. flare going on underneath. A supernova. Supernova. Did yeah. you want to explain to anybody what that is? No. No, it's gonna Not be a surprise. Gonna, uh, so the photos will will. Are you gonna make the collateral damage night run? If I don't work Saturday. Hmm. If you need a hand Saturday, let me know. Oh, okay. I heard a good, great. Uh, actually, over the weekend, I heard the greatest thing somebody had ever said. So somebody's broke down. Yeah. And Vern walks over and he says, is there anything I could say that will help? <laughs> not do, not offering, just say. No, offer help. No, is there anything I could say no. that will help? No. <laughs> right. Then you say, oh, cool, and yeah. walk away. So that became like the theme. Everybody nice. would break down. And, hey, is there anything we could say that would help? Um, so those of you guys that are watching real fast because it's distracting me, if you're on the YouTube channel and you see this red flashing light right here, this came from Snail Trail 4x4. Yeah. It's one, they sent us one of their gift boxes, which is really cool. Um, we got a lot to talk about. If we get to this later in the episode, we will. If not, we'll touch on it next week. But thank you guys for sending that product. Yeah, awesome. I know it was a couple weeks ago, but Max has been waiting for me to show up. So Yeah, I was going to rummage through it by myself. but I, was I like, saw you opened it. I'll, well, I had, after like 10 days, I had to be like, all right, what's in the box? I got to you know, see what's in the box. What's yeah. in the box, man? I, if I wish I could cut in Brad Pitt. What's in the box? Don't tell me. <laughs> Do you remember when that head was in there? Uh, mm -mm. No. From Seven, the movie Seven. Mm -mm. What's in the box? I was thinking of the song, the Dick in the Box song. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, what's in it? And you're shaking it. Well, if, yeah. <laughs> dicks. I've seen so many dicks this weekend. <laughs> we nice. got to get over that. Hopefully, we'll, I, uh, hopefully, I won't forget to explain what I just said. So later in the episode. Yes. All right. Well, then where we left off two weeks ago. Yes. Was... I was heading out to Buckeye Hills to show off the three optional lines. And I think we had just been talking about it because I had just done the night run out there yep. the weekend before. That's so I right. think we did cover that. Yep. So you went out and did the same trail, but with the, you, you knew of a, another segment of a wash right. that had 
three awesome obstacles, right? Yep, exactly. Three really fun obstacles. Yeah. We I've, I've been calling the option line, and yeah. I found out of or a the fourth. Bonus line or option line? Or what do you call it? The optional lines oh, or okay. uh, extra credit lines. There we go. That's what I was calling them. Um, but you've never seen any of these yet. No. Then while I was out there, I ran back into Randy, who showed me these ones, and he said, dude, oh, got a little static. He said, I can show you a really awesome line that even crazy Javier couldn't climb. And I'm like, why would we go in there? <laughs> if he can't climb it, we ain't even trying that. But uh, So we'll get off there. That started it out. That was hysterical, bro. I don't know why the hell I was up so late, but meetup time was 8.30. Yeah. And I'm like, sweet, bro. I live five minutes from here, and I got up at 8.22. Oh, <laughs> right, God. dude? I was like, Kristen walks in. She's like, Mike, aren't you supposed to be out of here? I was all, fuck, 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 running around. But I still had to take a shower, right? Yeah. So I jump in, get a shower, and... I forget who it was. Somebody texted me. Bro, are you coming? Because I, I had the map. Steve was texting. No, someone else did first. Oh, okay. Someone else. And I was like, yeah, on my way. Leaving the house. <laughs> In the shower. Oh, I think it was White Chris. Yeah. So, exactly. Dude, I was literally standing with, the, you know, like in the shower with my hand out trying to I'm on my text way. back. I'm leaving the door right now. Pulling the Jeep out of the garage, you know. And the, uh, um, so I had... I didn't eat, had no food. I threw just fucking like whatever beer I had in the fridge in there. You know what I mean? And I, luckily my neighbor has an ice machine. So I ran out there and he, I know his coach. I'll pop open the door, snag a couple bags of ice. It's in the garage or what? It's in his garage. Yeah. So, uh, Hey man, gotta live next to the Joneses, (laughs) get some cool stuff. So I get that. Then I take off and, and Steve's like, what the fuck dude? Are you coming or what? You know? And I was like, dude, I'm five minutes from you, you know? And I still probably, 10 minutes away or whatever but i pull in there because you know i'm the lead i got the i'm the only one with the gpx file right so i was like i know they're not going anywhere without me but i pull in and it's the biggest group that i think we've willed with in a long time yeah. how, how many did it end up being how many jeeps how many rigs i don't know honestly oh. but i know that one person i i do know that there was eight jks on one tons yeah fully built um, one tons i did hear 13 but I yeah, wasn't probably. sure if that was like including uh, when Randy showed up or, you know, I know some yeah. people had to leave. So I, I, di- I didn't know if it went higher or lower. Or yeah. Like so that. we know we had at least eight one ton Jeeps. So we know we have Brian, we had Randy, myself. Yeah. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, Javier, I don't know if they counted his as a, well, it's one ton Jeep, yeah. but it's not a JKU. Um, it's anyway, a J- it's a two door JK. Bro, yeah. that trail, you know, it's a, it doesn't matter. And now I know why we captured it like four or five rigs. Because everybody was built, nobody really broke, except for Randy and sort of I did. Yeah. The um, <laughs> but, but uh, it didn't slow us. Mine didn't slow us down. Randy's was a pain in the ass. But <laughs> anyway, which we'll get into. But at any rate, it still took us. Like we didn't get off the trail till six in the afternoon, yeah. bro. And it was hot, dude. Like um. And it was one of the first weekends where it was like real hot all of a sudden. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we got out there, and luckily that trail from where we, the meetup was was maybe fifteen minutes, you know. Oh. And um, I know the way in without cutting through that dude's yard like you let us, uh-huh. but I fucking missed it and made two <laughs> two turns, anyways. But I'm like, so you went through his yard. I'm on the radio going, just trust me, dude. I'm trying to stay out of this guy's yeah. yard. No, we didn't do the yard, but I figured it out. So we get in there. Everything's cool. We go to air down and I go to shut my tailgate, put all my stuff back in there. I go to shut my, my swing arm tailgate and not the tailgate, but the fucking tire carrier. Yeah. The swing out. Yeah. And it's like a half an inch below the bumper. Uh-oh. And I'm like, that's fucking weird. I was like that. That's it sits not right. On top of the bumper. Yeah. It like, slides it on top. Hinged, it's hinged. Right. And yep. then like, yeah. yeah. So it's on a big old, huge one ton or one inch, in, one inch solid tube. But it's not double shear, you know. It's yeah. it's actually the one you can get from Rough Stuff. They might have improvised on it, and it's been on there for five years with massive beatings, and it's holding. It used to hold a high lift jack and a thirty nine yeah. inch tire with a bead lock. Wait, I think your carrier itself is heavy. It's at least forty five pounds. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I was like, when it came off, I was like, <laughs> which is what we're getting to. It's uh. Uh, I was like, there ain't no way this is going back on. Max ain't ever going to be lighter than me, bro. Because <laughs> I just saved 45 pounds yeah. and moved the tire inside where it crawls better. So, But at any rate, I, I, Chris and I thought maybe the, the bolt came loose and the, the compression bearings or whatever yeah. came loose. So I got out with the Crescent Ranch, tightened it up. It helped a little, but not good, you know. I put it on, get going a little bit more. So this is actually halfway down the road, down the way. Dude, I hit a bump. That fucker <laughs> flew off. It like got projectiled <laughs> off the back of the bumper. And it's like, and at this moment, at this moment, we had ran into like 
something broke. Somebody did this, that. Uh, and we were only going like five feet before something broke again. And So mul- every, multiple people's Jeeps were having issues? Yeah, and I'm trying to remember. We had Chris. Chris cut a tire. Oh, that's right. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we had Chris cut a tire. Randy ended up having TBI issues, fuel yep. injection issues. And then my tire carrier came off. Oh, okay. Out of all the repairs, my car- my my shit was running again in like three minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Because you just throw it in the Jeep. Yeah, I knew exactly where to put it. I kind of knew it was going to come off because I knew that that just didn't feel right. But it broke that one-inch shaft. It wasn't my weld. The one-inch shaft Damn. broke clean off. Was dude. it solid? Yeah, dead solid. Dang. It sounded. It was funny because I hit. You know that one, that one obstacle that you go on the right has that huge ass like moon crater, and then you turn that corner. I think so. I'm in there and I hear pink, and I thought I broke an axle, Damn. and I was like, Ooh. but it, so I you know feeling it and everything was good. Then I turned the corner and boom, the whole thing <laughs> flew off. You know. So well, what were they saying on the um, on that group chat? Were they like? Did you yard sale the tire carrier? Yeah, yeah. Or like it changed my name to tire. Do I have a tire carrier for sale? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yard sale the whole back end off, Damn. tore off my antenna on my radio. Yeah. Oh, the wiring, the wiring, everything. my license plate, everything went with it. So Damn. the um, it was pretty funny. But the uh, <laughs> so we we pull into the first obstacle. We, we, we you know work our way back into it, and you had, that last time when you and I did that obstacle breakdown. You took the hard left line. Yes. So we've learned, actually, the cheater line is 35 baby tires, whatever. That's the far, far yeah. right line. Yeah. The actual line that where Randy broke, where Steve, it was Steve's line, and you were saying it was White Chris's line. Yeah. <laughs> Steve took that, and um, uh, Steve took it, and Brian. Oh, cool. Tan Hulk. So he took the, it. The Brian Schwarzenegger. Yeah, who I like. I actually <laughs> like that the best. We, yeah. We have two of these crazy-ass chats going now, so we'll try to keep up, folks. But, yeah, so Brian got what went through there. Um, and then the super ass hard obstacles, that's 42s. You got to have 42s to be in there. I think the, the, um, the line that I took just to the right. Yep. Yep. So yeah, we explained all that with the soup bowl and all that. One of the previous episodes, yep. the, the salable, then your line. And you were like, you're going to try the line. So first thing I did was I went in and I looked at it. I'm like, all these people oh, were already late because of me. Ah, I'm not going to try you're already it. there. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to try it. Steve goes up the middle or up to one side and I was about to follow him and White Chris comes over and he's like, that line there? He's like talking about it. And we're looking at it and I'm going, yeah, it's a little more dug out. You yeah. know what I mean? Because of the, the and wind. And it's a weird like angled S curve. You got to drive into it. You can't like hit it the way you want it. Yeah. So I happened to look. I was looking for that hole that we that you have to straddle, right? Yeah. That hole was gone. So I assumed it actually got filled in a little oh. bit. So I was like, you know what? I am going to try it. So I pull over in there and I just so took your that's line. that's why you made it. Maybe. So I went all the way over there. And I got up on the right hand side, climbed up on it. Yep. No problem. Never once felt like it was going to go over backwards. So it must not be as steep as it was, right? So, but it, I mean, it's still steep, obviously. But it used to be semi smooth on both sides, and the right side had been broke off. So there was huge grabber ledges, nice, nice ledges. Yeah. So I climb up on it, crawl, you know, got the low gear, and it sat there and it's like. Eh, eh, eh. I, s- I saw that in a video. Just like it's kind of like. It's not floating is not the right word. No, but you're kind of like in one fun. spot, yeah. like until you break over to the top. Yeah, almost at the break. Yeah. Exactly. And it was just lugging, one lug at yeah. a time. And I was going to back off, and Dennis is standing right there, and he goes, no, man, just yeah. he's like. Work it. He's, yeah, he just goes a little left. He's like, I see if you can just, there was yeah. one little nub I couldn't get. And the um, so anyways, I sat there and sat there and sat there and sat there. And then I, somebody I in the video. If you took off what almost two hundred pounds hanging off the rear bumper, and it was inside, I wonder if your the way your Jeep is weighed with two hundred pound difference. Yeah, but it, it actually hadn't broke off yet. So oh, everything oh, was, was the after. Same. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. So, hmm. Never so mind. I take it back. But at any rate, it hops there. You hear somebody on the obstacle or on yeah. the video go, "Is this one of those video or those places you got to crawl?" And then Richard, I think, said, "No, nah, he's been up it." Yeah. So, um, but at any rate, it 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 just. Two or three clicks, and then boom, it walked right up it. Nice. But first shot, one shot, man. And I was that's like, awesome. hell yeah. yeah. So then, that's uh, how I do it. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> no, it didn't no, go up as, it did not go up as smooth as you did that day, not yeah. by any stretch. That was a, that was a fluke, though. That yeah. was just the, the lucky choice. You, you know? didn't like, even spin a tire. Yeah, because right. I think I broke a taillight in there before. I, you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, um, and I've never made that lineup, but yeah. I, I've tried like yeah. five times. So, what a good feeling. Yeah. So I was pumped. Days yeah. on, boom. And then, um, so, so it goes in. A couple other people go through there. I think Dennis went next. No issues, no yeah, problems. Dennis does everything on those 
40s and I know it's awesome fours and just super slow and in control but that's all I think that's why he doesn't break really because yeah. he can when it fills a bind he stops yeah. you know and smart and, yeah so but what, that what, that what obstacle do we, what do we do like oh give it a little gas you know dude, like, rah, rah. Dude, freaking Javier <laughs> he's got like the Lunge. gearing you got or whatever yeah. dude but he, he went up it like in one shot too but he went up a manual like or automatic? five six miles an hour <laughs> <laughs> like really he's doing like an Arizona bump up it but and he's got the sport 273 transfer case. Bro, when he takes off, he takes off. <laughs> Let's just say that, right? <laughs> but he made it easy as hell, too. So he went right up it. Um, and then D- uh, Daryl jumps in into the hard line, the one yeah. that I've almost flipped over backwards on. So the furthest left, but exiting to the right. You know what's gnarly, though, before we move on to that one? The one that I did, it, when you're on it, you can't back off. There's a huge rock, and when you back down, that rock keeps you from backing up. You yeah, have to go you're back. Over. You're, yeah, you're right. You're backing up into a wall almost. Yeah, be, yeah you're exactly. you're pivoting on the top out of it. So you straddle that rock, but once you get up and your back tires sink into the hole, now you have that monster rock behind you and you oh, can't well, get out from under it. Not if you don't have a tire on the back. Yeah, even so, your bumper, because Javier didn't and he was stuck in there. I think my approach angle is like, or my departure right. angle is so good that I... Be able to walk up. I bet I, it's in I your would, door, dude. I would hit the wall behind me. Mm, no, I'm talking the floor. Like, yeah. it's so steep at that point. Isn't it all sand in the bottom? Yeah, but just mm-hmm. one. I think one of the rocks that we see now oh. that broke off is now at the bottom. Okay. Of that. That'd so be a problem. It's a monster. Because, like, it was on my spare tire. It was in the rim of the spare tire. Damn. And you're like, damn, that ain't coming out. You know? So it was funny because every time I tried to give it gas, it would slide back. And I was yeah. like, ooh, got to get off the gas. I get saw that in the, the video. Gas. Like, you're slowly lugging along, yep. but you're like, up, down. Uh, it's like, every time. Yeah. So I just had to wait for it to do its thing. But yeah. so then Daryl muscles his way through the hard line yeah. the actual hard line and that one was filled in at the top so the breakover wasn't as bad uh, roll your back window down <laughs> But if you see, did you see the Tony Townsend yeah. with the red Jeep? His whole front tire is off the ground. Both of oh, them yeah. banging around until he like turns the wheels and he grabs like a ledge on the side. And yeah, I think he grabbed. I think it pivoted him like a turtle, yeah. and the rear caught and threw his yeah. front onto that wall. He happened to be, and then he went and three wheeled it off the top. That was awesome. It really was awesome. That Jeep. That Jeep is awesome. I know. And it looks so long for some reason, but that oh. guy's super cool, man. I never yeah. will with him before. And Me neither. I, I really, I didn't know that, um, till like a day or two before that he was going to go. Yeah. I was super bummed that I couldn't make it. Really soft-spoken, nice guy, man. Mm-hmm. Like, doesn't get too amped up. And that guy's crazy because he did that in 106-degree weather or whatever it was. He used to be a pool guy, too. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And the f- fucking next day, he's in Florence. And I was like, yeah. damn, dude, that's hardcore. That's and, across the whole and state. And he did that 100-degree quartzite th- thing. Yeah, like just with, with uh, Robert. Straw hat and no doors. and Yeah, <laughs> that's cruising. awesome. Never bitches, never complains. Yeah. Good dude. And his Jeep's very, very well built. We got to learn from him. Just to be cool <laughs> and low strung? No, no. Just, yeah, the heat is good. Oh. I love the heat. It yeah, really doesn't yeah. bother me. But you do get tired by the end of the day. Oh, but yeah. so Daryl muscled his way through it. And it's it's one of those things. You could try a line, try a line, try a line, and, and not make it and bail out. But as soon as you see somebody make it, fucking somebody oh, yeah. else makes yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. he Daryl did it, and then Tony did it, and then Richard did it, yeah. and, and all of them. You don't want to be the guy that couldn't oh, make it. Jason did it. Yeah. You know, And Jason's my wheelbase. So it's like, Damn. what the hell, dude? Actually, I think he's one inch. He's 101. So, But he's got way more flex than I have. I thought he was 106. No, he said 101. When we were out the filter, he said 101. So, but it's, I mean, it's a beautiful Jeep. That guy's a, but again, got an awesome he's, shop. He's got an underdrive crawl box. Mm-hmm. He has a lot more control than a lot of these Jeeps. Yeah, but same as me. He's just yeah. got, the only difference, well, there's a lot of differences. But, Auto, well, and automatic. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, you know what? To be honest, since I've had the crawl box, I have, even the yeah. automatic isn't an excuse. Nice. So, because I don't even need the gas, it does it all on its own. But it's it's fucking cool. So, anyways, we get through there. 
Then her drive. That's, that's the first like big obstacle on the yeah. trail, right? <clears throat> so now you guys are going to the extra credit lines. Like, is the turnoff soon after that? I think it is. Yeah, I mean, wait. You know, the, that trail kind of sucks because you got those huge gaps yeah. across the desert yeah. while you're waiting for the next drop in. So I don't, I don't exactly remember which was what, but we get into the next one. So that's so. Oh, then we do like the one on the right. You know, that big ass pivot. The dip. The, the dip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I walk through there. And I just get past that, right? And then you have right after that is the big hump on the right. That's yes. just scary going off the back. Yeah. So right there, Randy broke. He's got his YJ. He broke. He has no fuel. So I tow him because he's blocking the trail. I tow him as I climb that one on the right. <laughs> nice. So to get him out of the way, I took him up over that. And I was like ready to drop off the back while the, the rope was still attached, you know, a little bit spooky there. Yeah. But um, so then I got off of it. And the plan was, then you have the V-notch, that mm -hmm. little regular little V-notch yep. down the ways. So I told everybody, so I went through it and I blasted up. So right there, there's also an exit, like a easy, not an easy, but a pretty steep ass hill exit. So I go through the V-notch, rip back to there to winch, to winch Randy up that hill and get him onto the main road. And so, so somebody could haul him back. Yeah. Um, cause it, it just wouldn't start. He had no, he had a TPS issue or something. Turned out to actually to be a fuel pump, but so this trail started off good. We made some obstacles we hadn't made before. That first one, I did. And my freaking tire rack fell off. I had to cram everything in there. Dennis took the carrier. And then we had a Jeep lose a fuel pump. We had to winch him up and out of the ditch, which ran my battery down so bad that now I keep popping a circuit breaker again. Um, yeah, now we got White Chris has got a flat. He cut a sidewall. Uh, that's it so far. We're only like halfway through. It's a rough trail. It's fun though. At any rate, so I do that, and then my winch, man, dude. As soon as I winch with that winch, I keep popping that stupid circuit breaker. So I oh. think it's my winch and not the bat because the battery's good. I got it. I have a new circuit breaker. I got to get it swapped out. Yeah, but a winch is so simple to wire in. It's like the it's two tiny balls. ground and the two the two big leads to the battery. They're yeah, like, I've never had an issue before ever. So but it must be internally something's wrong. Possibly. I, I'm hoping. So I have a new 70 amp circuit breaker yeah because circuit breakers do wear out yeah they get hot and it's in the engine you know it's above the exhaust so it, i'm hoping and i never had an issue before and i've winched tons of times before so true but um but the problem with it is is when that damn thing pops the jeep doesn't shut off yeah the, just the accessories just the fans yeah. <laughs> yeah so then it starts to try to overheat on me so but anyway and um, your gauge is a little bit like if you're not looking at it, you're not going to notice, huh? Yeah, you, and so. it's it's weird anyways because once you use the winch, it kills it, so then it starts showing the draw. Yeah. But you can't tell if it's it's the same as if it's disconnected. So, <laughs> but at any rate, it was. I think it was Steve. I think I had Steve. So anyway, it took two of us to winch his shit up to the top. He gets to the top and starts right up. We're like, what the fuck? But um, hmm. so then Brian ended up having to leave too. He had to do something across town, so he ended up taking off right there. Nice. And that's he, cool. Someone went out with him. Yeah, he followed him out, and then they book. Uh, so then we get into some of the other stuff. One of the extra credit lines is this crazy. It's not crazy, but it's a left heel climb around a wall, and you can't see it. That was the first time I went through there. Was really steep. Yeah. But so many people went through there now. It's pretty. It's pretty narrow or pretty wide. So is, it's not. Is that the one where most of the videos were taken, or not yet? No, I don't think any videos were on this. Okay. Because we. Because again, it was hot, so I just kept the party moving, you yep. know, and um, trying to get to the good stuff, and. It was fun, but it's such it's crazy because it's blind, mm -hmm. and you have to climb. You climb the dri the driver's tire way up, and you float the passenger's tire in the nice. air, and then it pivots around this turn, and you just don't know if you can make it. And it looks really gnarly, yeah. but I don't think anybody had an issue through there. Would that be a good area to do a front dig? Yes, awesome oh. area, especially if you could do a true one with your little brake thing back there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, it yeah. actually like locks actually just lock one the, tire, lock the side, like uh -huh. lock up one rear. Okay. Yeah, because when you know when the yeah, if you don't have a selectable lock there, the dig's kind of a half dig because yeah. you're dragging both rears instead of one. Oh. It won't be as sharp. But if you can disengage the rear, you're fine. You yeah. Know? So at any rate, we get through there. Um, so Randy was having all kinds of starter, or, you know, that issue. He's now gone out of the picture. Um, we get through that thing. We get into it. Was the, Oh, so then we get to the big waterfall. And there, um, so Jason came with me. Uh, crazy or old man Don came with me okay. and myself or whatever. And the exit to that shit, dude, I'm like, I'm like, this is the exit out. And they're like, that dude, we gotta go to this crate. Cause it's a huge, it's like a cave 
right here, and you have to go up around the cave opening. Yeah, and it's, it's so that's the one where all the videos got taken. That's down further. Oh. This was the exit, the bypass. So oh. where we took, but it's crazy. The bypass is like, it's pretty not crazy, but it's rough. And right at the base of that, White Chris got flat tire, cut ah. a tire. So, of course, all, like all up on an obstacle, all weird. No, nah, he was. It was. He was right before he got there. So it was oh. actually should have been super simple. So we got the tire up. Got it. You know, he's got a forty. We get the tire up with a bottle jack. Yeah. I'm standing in there and I'm doing something with his radio. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I got one leg under the jeep, one in there, and the fucking thing falls off the bottle jack. Drop the axle. Mm. Or something. Or something. The jack the just fell. Yeah. Luckily, nobody got hurt. That was a close yeah, one. Yeah, but his living straps are set up for a hell of a thing. And, and once it fell off, now it's in the sand. We yeah. got tires in the way. Luckily, nobody got hurt. Everybody's there. I got a new name because I grabbed an umbrella for shade. I became Mary Poppins now, <laughs> right? So well, that already changed again, right? I don't or, know. Are we talking different? Chats That's now? the other chat. Yeah, mm, so, yeah. So Too I don't much. Know. I, have, I know. So the um, but at any rate, so now I, I got an umbrella. We're doing it, but everything we were trying to do to get this fucking Jeep, we got a high lift jack out. It was super sketchy, and yeah. the, the axles stretched too far. So we lay her back down. It took like an hour to change a tire. And what was the issue with the bottle jack? Like sand or rocks, yeah. uneven ground. And it was a little ass dinky, dinky bottle jack. You know oh. what I mean? Like, yeah, just it was. It just kept sliding up the axle, and it was a weird angle. And now because it was in the ground, the angle was super crazy. Yep. So Richard has the ARB jack. Yeah, it's like eight hundred like bucks. Pneumatic or air. Or it's well, like, it's a single pump. It's yeah. a hand pump, but it's like one pump, and the thing moves like three or four inches. You know, I guess three Damn. or four. It pumps really fast. Yeah. And it has all these things you can like flip a jeep with it. So we get it. Per- it works perfectly the first time. Uh oh. Right. We get it to the top. Works flawlessly, but th- there's so much flex back there that he can't get the tire out of the sand. So we lower it back down. We put a ratchet strap on it. Yeah. Jack it back up. The ratchet strap breaks. Ah, lower it back down. Yeah. Somebody's yeah, you got need a, a heavy duty like yeah, a big heavy one. duty strap. So someone gets a big heavy duty one. We get the thing back up. Now Richard Jack won't work. Everything ah, is right. It won't pump for no reason, dude. Like he's pumping the shit out of it. Won't go. We're thinking it's got an air pocket in there. So about 15 minutes later, somehow it did it. But the angle again was so sketchy. The Jeep is, it's like at a 45 to the Jeep is going yeah. in the door. We jack it up, set it on a block, jack it up more, put it on a rock, jack it up a little more. It took fucking forever yeah, dude, for a simple tire ass. change. And anyway. moving a 40 inch tire on a beadlock ring sucks. Yeah. Man. yeah. It's like, and I, I, heavy. And dude, like, it was a cut on the sidewall. And I was like, just plug the shit out of that. Yeah. And he's Drive like, Drive it till you get to the road. Yeah. And he's like, No, I got a brand new one. I'm like, Yeah, but what if you cut that one? You know what I mean? He's like, I got certs, you know, but we learned from Scott. He got yeah. changed one and cut it fifty feet more and cut another one. <laughs> yep. But uh, so anyway, we should have just all mad though. Right, but continue. yeah, we should have just plugged the shit out of it. So we go through there, get to the big obstacle, the big big fall. Nobody made that fall. Oh, um, Richard and Tony both came up the best and easiest, but didn't make it. But didn't make it. I think Tony, if he could have made the turn, would have walked up it. But um, so since no one made it, was that like an offshoot on the trail, and you could just back up and continue? No, we had to drag everybody over it. Like well, everyone had to. Oh, yeah, because once that was that one. So when you're in it, once so it's the craziest thing, dude. Like it's so, so that's the one where all the videos were. Taken. Yeah, all those videos okay. were Steve. Okay. Where everyone winched. Yep, I think. I think Steve was the first one up. I I could have made it. I think you could. Yeah. Totally. Oh really? Totally. Nice. Yeah. You got good flex, and you ain't afraid of body damage. We were also trying not damage. to do body damage. Oh, everyone was on that? But yes and no. I mean, yeah. every single person pushed it to the limits. Nobody got as steep as Steve did. Right, so like Bob or um, Randy's wife. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Grab that. Steve was so freaking straight up and down that his washer fluid was coming out, yeah. right? So yeah. it's like, all, and, and dude, he was, it's just, so I have, to, like, I have a rant here, a little baby rant. So if you, I told everybody, you're probably going to have to winch up this part. You okay. know what I mean? The long wheelbase is probably have an issue to, or have a, a, a way to get in there. If you can, I knew that if they could clear that first ledge, you get so you're climbing and you're off camber and it wants to throw you over, but it is so light like, like that. It's such a fine line to get it perfect without flopping over. Okay. So you get to a point where you're, you're just balancing literally on one tire. So Steve's there and dude he's got he is so fucking straight up and down and i go you want a line he's like yeah 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 like he had no zero hesitation yeah. you want a line yeah. that's in the video 
And then I go, where's your winch controller? It's under his seat. Right, so I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You guys know you're coming into this with the w- oh, that you might have to win. Why would the, why would you not be ready? Oh, but under the seat is one of the better spots so far, except for the fact that you're straight up and down, and you're literally oh, and the per- seatbelt's locked. And so unless you take the seatbelt off, he can't reach it. I don't think he could come out. Yeah, like it um, it was so precarious. You like people were holding the bumper to keep yeah. him from going, and it would have. It's not a if you go off, you fall backwards. Oh, You'll like hit. like uh, like overhead. Like yeah, tires he would like backwards. In the air. Yep. So Damn. he's so straight up and down. He would have rocked backwards and then fell sideways, driver side down into a crack. They would. The That's only way bad. to get out of that crack is to drag yeah. him sideways out of it until if you can, you can flip it. him back back over. I'm sure. I'm sure you could get five or six winches on him <laughs> and take, take him out of there. But just so so. Anyways, yeah. somehow he got his winch controller out. I think somebody jumped down in the hole. But now you're in the fall hole. You're yeah. in the fall zone, right? Yeah. So you get that out, and then, um, so we winch him up, no issues, no big deal. I went around, so he winched to me, mm-hmm. and then tug, tug. Dude, that's way gnarly. He almost flopped. Well, tip back onto his top. At this point, I kept popping the circuit breaker, so I wasn't ah. using my winch. So we spun him around to winch everybody else up with his winch. Yep. Um, a yeah. Couple, he, he told me that was hard winching some of these people up. Dude, like Jesse? Is that his name? Yeah, Jesse. I always get him confused the with green, Jason. Yeah, the, the green, the green one. So Jesse. Jesse, he wasn't making a far enough breakover. So when they were trying to winch him, it was like nose diving it into the front cross yeah. member. And it was digging this huge ass trench, bro. Anyway. We had to let him like let out. You're gonna have to climb, and as he would like spin and sputter and try to get the cross member up, then we'd be like, "All right, now start winching," you know. Yeah. But we had two winches on him. He had his winch on Steve, and Steve's on him. And trying to come get both of them to do the same thing at the same time was like, oh, it's impossible. It was like talking to well, that, a Chinese person and no, a Spanish that's person. That's where you need a handheld radio. Both those guys need right. to be receivers, right? And just, and you just say now winch now, and b- that way you have that's the. But if you're yelling it and you're Steve Jesse. Oh, <coughs> Well, you would go, Monkeys. you would go, Steve out. And Jesse would go out and you'd be like, no, 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 Steve, yeah. you stay tight. Jesse yeah. pull out. And then, and then you have to figure out how to get them both driving and releasing it enough to get, it was very, very weird. So then we, anyway, we get them up. No issue. Or get them up. No problem. Uh, Daryl, I forget Daryl. Daryl went in there too. Same deal. I'm trying to think who but was no, it. No one made it up. Nobody. Unassisted. No. But my second rant was Chris, white Chris, yeah. doesn't have a hook on his on his rope. <laughs> I already I heard this. Right? <laughs> but and it's t- and he sucks it in behind yeah. the bumper. So now you're yeah. in there with your fingers in the fucking fair lead. <laughs> the tiny fair lead like yeah. slot. Yeah. So so yeah. at one point we had we were trying I think it was Javier. Javier didn't have a winch, so Steve's got him there and it's pulling Javier over onto his <laughs> side. Not up uh, because he's so twisted up in there. I don't know if it was him or not, but it's whoever he was on. So I said, and and Chris wanted to watch this, the show and stay in AC, so he yeah. just backed up into the corner. But he would have been perfect to just throw a quick snatch block on him yep. and just bring it over to that. You know, they would have gave us a perfect angle without Steve having to remaneuver and all the shit. Because yeah. once they were hooked up and pulling on it, we didn't really want to let him go because it, it was very precarious, dude. Like, <sighs> what a so good, what a good weekend. That yeah, sucks to miss out on. Yeah, that, you, you we're know, going back out. It's it's so close, you know. I didn't even air up yet, so it's Damn, that's how close it ago. is. I know. It's the, <laughs> my Jeep looks every time I park it, it looks so beat up. It's like Jesus, man, thanks for riding me hard. The, uh, but at any rate, so I go to Chris. Let's put a slash block on here, and I pull it. And I finally get his stupid eyelid out. Then I pull it out, and he's just chilling in the AC, you know. And I'm like, "Where's the fucking hook, bro? Like, do you have, <laughs> like, where's the hook?" And it, uh, somebody's like, "Use a soft shackle," but it's the thimble, bro. So it's like. The soft, it's, is a, it's sh- a is sharp a soft sa- is a soft shackle too thick to go through it no but if you i mean we do have thinner ones but it could cut on it you know what i mean and uh, we don't want to have any kind of mistakes especially once you add a snatch block well and especially yeah you don't want to just lunge backwards or, or anything yeah because yeah, we're to a hole, we're trying to move the angle of the pull yeah so if that Ooh. come off it's gonna yeah. you know what i mean it's gonna snap straight and gotcha. fucking javier's gonna flip and th- whoever's in the yeah. danger zone is gonna get killed so <laughs> Like Robert Palafox was in the danger zone <laughs> all the time. Yeah, well, at one point he got it. He wasn't there with us, but he got it. He was telling us a story. He had the winch line. Guy f- takes off on him. His legs in it, and it just cartwheels him into the freaking air, bro. Nice. Lands him right on his back. So, 
the anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to have him in here to tell that story. So, um, but at any rate, so I'm like that, and Chris is like, oh, there's a hook behind my seat. So I was like, all right, no big deal. Get in, in the big jumbly box? No, it was luckily oh. in the little pocket on the oh, back nice. of the seat. So oh, I yeah. reached right in there, and you know, so it has the pin that you put through the thimble. Yeah. Well, the fucking pin has a cotter pin, and the cotter pin is spread apart, <laughs> right? So, I'm, I, dude, and it's that, a hard. That's, that's how you don't lose the pin. It's a hard cotter pin, bro. <laughs> I'm like, I'm on the bumper. And, I'm trying and it's to. It's so tiny. Yeah. Like it's cutting your fingers almost. Yeah. And it's, it's like 106 out, right? Yeah. So I'm, I can't fucking do it. I can't get the thing over, and I go, dude, where's the, where's the needle? Where's the pliers? Needle on those pliers. He's like, oh, that's buried in the back in one of the bags. And fucking, and I was just, I threw the hook back behind the seat, man. I was like. Who the f- and I'd walk off. Who the fuck doesn't put a hook on their fucking winch line? It's uh, fucking stupid. And I was getting pissed. If you know yeah. what I mean? So I'm walking well, but off. You're, it's hot. Like you said, it's hot. It's hot. Nothing's set up yeah. again. And by that time, you know, like fucking Steve was moved over where yeah. he should have, you know, not where he should have been, but where he's at. And yeah. everybody was having a good time still. You know what I mean? I'm in my own pissy world yeah. at the moment. Oh, and, a- angry Chris. And I'm not bad. even pissed. Don't no, get me wrong. I know. I know. Just ir- I'm like, that makes no fucking sense. I-, I think the heat makes people a little irritable. Like if it's not going right, you can't figure it out. Bro, just know? have, you know, if you think there might be a winch problem, yeah. <laughs> get your fucking winch ready. You know what I mean? Seriously. Why mm-hmm. wait till the last minute? Well, and if you're not the first one going up, there's probably a lot of time involved, right? Like yeah. you guys were out there for ten hours or longer, dude. Every if you saw this obstacle, the chances you winching are ninety nine percent. You know what I mean? And I told yeah. everybody you'll probably have to winch. Dude, the reason I'm going to the top is to give someone a winch point. This is like the perfect uh, little side tangent to say have the in cab controller absolutely have it hardwired. The in cab with that safety on off, and then the yep. little double buttons. And that, if you don't that twelve volt guy.com yep. or whatever exactly I was i've been, I've been eyeballing one for a while like i want an in cab winch they control. are su- i made mine they're super crazy easy to make it costs like eight fucking dollars oh. we have the wire to make them or yeah. you can go to the 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 that guy so did you just ta- did you open guy. your um the the box on top of the winch yeah and where where you're usually you have that plug did you just like splice into those wires inside that or nope how? you don't even have to do that Oh. You just you you so like if you have a five pin if mm-hmm. you have a three pin you don't need to do any of this it just hooks right up and you have a I have a warn I think it's five well they 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 have both oh okay. so even my mine was five and mine's super old so yeah. you probably have a five also but all you're trying to do and there's a bazillion diagrams on the internet you just running you have to run a constant power to one of them yeah. right so you just jump the power off a of main power you just jump jump one of the solenoids so now you have just a forward and reverse solenoid hmm. that's it so. It's super easy, and I use the the wire off the pool lights that we cut, and it looks on there. It looks like it was meant. Oh, on the there. thicker one, not yeah. not the pool pump control wire, the pool nope, light. the big one, a pool light. Yeah, you oh. take the good stuff off of a new one. Yeah, the excess, you know, cut that yeah. off, and That's it's a good idea. And, it, and you put it with a grommet and drill it's through heavy there. Duty. It looks exactly like the other wires, and it's insulated. Yep. It's all protected. It's meant to be outdoor. Yep. Elements. And the only thing going up there is, is. The little tiny stuff. The relays are down on the winch, so yeah, that that it's a little wire. And then you do with the same thing. You make an arming switch, and yep. then a momentary in and out. Yes. And I added a light, so I knew it was on, right? And then I added those little U bolt things, I so that. I don't accidentally yes. turn it on. Yeah, that the the power switch is protected by the you have hoops around hoops, it basically, yeah. so you, you don't just flip it on and off for fun. Yeah, exactly. So it literally is like eight dollars worth of stuff, Damn. and we have the cord. So, and and like I need that. Two hours of work, maybe at the mm-hmm. most, if you're trying to route it pretty. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so at any rate, um, yeah. So so it, it is, and I I I just believe that the other thing I you know like well it's on the fly. Listen, like now you're in a bad spot. Hey, I got a winch. I got yeah. a winch. I, you're ready. No, Your you freaking need line nothing. needs to be able to have a big enough eyelet. Yeah. That will accept a soft shackle because that's what everybody's <laughs> using. And yes. the very first thimbles from Factor 55 don't accept a, a full-size shackle. You need one oh. like what Steve has. You know, you, the old ones were that cheap little thin thimble that yeah. just had the one eyelet coming out. I think that's what I have. Okay. No, well, I have like an end on my rope. Right. Regardless of which, whichever oh. one you have, make sure a soft shackle fits in it. Yeah. Make sure a hook is on there or something. My winch line doesn't have a hook but it's always on a soft shackle and i smoothed out all my winch connection points so they're super rounded okay good and um so it's always a soft shackle and everything's always out yeah so tip soft shackle should never be on a sharp edge take a note chris god damn it shame on you young man right shame next time bro i'm just gonna (laughs) freewheel that bitch out onto the ground and leave it (laughs) 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 and i'm gonna walk off giving you deuces you gotta drew them 
And I won't even say what it is. Yeah, right. I'll but you know what it is. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it around his drive shaft. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> like, <laughs> So it coils? Yeah. No, Drew would, what, what would he do? He'd undo your the, winch, up, <laughs> lay it under your Jeep, and hook it to the guy behind the you. Behind you. So when you drive off. <laughs> so you didn't notice when you were peeing in front of your Jeep <laughs> that the rope went below you? Tied to your own axle no. or something stupid. Tied to a tree, something dumb. Yeah. I guess it's got to be a night run. Okay. There you go. It's less visual. So, yeah. So, so at any rate, you should do, I'm just saying everybody should have all the fixtures needed on your winch line to be able to winch. And everybody, the other thing I don't like, here's another bitch. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. But for serious, everybody with a hard, was that sh- shackle? Was that hard? Was that called a shackle? The, the metal ones. Yeah. Okay. A, shi- a regular, a regular like, metal shackle. shackle. I got four on my Jeep. Yeah. Right. All over the place. Yeah. It, already on. <laughs> They're not in the fucking toolbox. They're not on. Now, the other thing. Okay. If I, you I, hand I, me a I shackle, am, make I sure I can unscrew that. the fucking thing. Don't have it on with a crescent wrench. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't need to be yeah. on a crescent wrench if it's in your toolbox. Yeah. I, I I have like two in a toolbox somewhere. But I, I, I also always have two free soft shackles that I would right. prefer to use. The next run that I start. At the meetup point, I'm gonna check everybody has a shackle in the front and the rear on, and some on their fucking winch. And if they don't, go home, bro. Go home. Ooh, what if my rear recovery point is a loop? That's fine, but no shackle, because a shackle like a like a metal shackle will just clank around on there. You know, it's not a hole. I have a big F550 recovery point on the rear. That, of my if you, can you just slap a rope on it? Oh, easy. There you go. That's and all you need. Hook. But if it's just the the clevis, oh, it's clevis. If yeah. it's just the clevis, yeah, mount. That's no good, bro. You can't put a soft shackle through yeah. it. You got to have a fucking clevis on it yeah. and put your clevis on. And if they're, I've heard, I don't want to get stolen. Well, you're not being, you're in it right now. Let's get it ready for the trail, man. You lock your hubs in or you leave them unhocked. Yeah. No, you and, lock your hubs in, right? And how many of our friends park out in the street all night, all week? Very few. Zero. Regardless. Th- that's that. If they have yeah. to, that's fine. Like yeah. I know a couple of people leave their Jeep on the side of the house. Daryl is one of them, right? Oh, he, you're right. Okay, so, one. Right. So fine. I get it. Hey, part of your maintenance when you're airing down, throw your clevises on Damn. and make sure your hook is on. You got a tech inspection on the next I'm going run. to. I absolutely am going to. What, do you have fines? Do you no. have like no. stickers that say no. this Jeep is ill-prepared? No. That'd be a no. good one, though. A no. big pink sticker that says It just says, doesn't make Jeep, any sense. This Jeep is not ready for this run. Please see the supervisor of this run. Right. <laughs> no, but you know, know, you know what I, it was is, so Dennis and I, we are doing a lot of fucking running around. Yeah. And yeah. both, and I looked and over at Dennis, and I thought he was in heat exhaustion. Yeah. He's sitting down dizzy as hell. Mm-hmm. I was running up and down obstacles trying to stack some rocks and go up and down. And it, like, I, I felt it for sure, you know? And then I have a shitty cooler. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude, I'm so sick of drinking warm beer and having warm, soggy ass shit because the cooler sucked, man. I even bought yeah. a new cooler for it. It still sucks so bad. What kind of cooler? What, what was your previous cooler that you bought that? Um, still sucks. I actually got another Ingle, but a ice cooler, you know, oh, ice yeah. cooler, dude. I'm just done with them. I'm over them. I- anyway, I had, I, I filled that thing up with ice this morning mm-hmm. and it's fucking already water. But you're supposed to pre-cool those. Whatever. Like in the house. Yeah. Or even with ice packs where you pre-cool yeah. them, put everything in it cold and then ice on top. That's yeah. how they get away with saying like, it lasts for 10 years. Dude, I'm changing you know? it. Even the Yeti, like we had two Yetis yeah. on this last run, two Yetis in my Ingle and the Yetis even went empty. Did you pre-cool it? I don't know. No, <laughs> probably not. All right, yes, pre-cool my cooler. If I can bitch about shackles and all that, I'll pre pre do my coolers. Holy crap. Anyways, so we get to the hard obstacle. Everybody had to be winched up. There's going to be a ton of video in here yeah. while we're talking about it. Um, oh, sorry to interrupt, but no. that um, that really th- those extra credit lines and that hard one you've just been describing, that's the one we were talking about with at, at Club Scottle Steve or Club Scottle at Steve's. Um, how we want to light it up at night and go out there yeah. with enough lights and do like an obstacle breakdown on something like that. Yeah, that one's good because you, there's definitely one line, yeah. you know, and, and it's weird because the way you have to work around just to get in position. If they could be in position. I think anybody could climb it. So but, cool. God, yeah. I missed out on a good one. But I watched Randy's wife do it in their buggy. And you have as much flex as that buggy and the same wheelbase, and you really could yeah, walk but right I'm up. I'm probably two thousand pounds heavier. That's true. So, and and my and gearing's not had, so ideal on really low, slow stuff. They and, also had stickies. That always mm-hmm. helps too. But they were able to. I don't think anybody, man. Did, I, I don't think anybody was able to get over the hump without needing a winch line first. 
So they got stuck on the belly? Like they got turtled over the hump? No, or? just trying to get lined up. You, oh, okay. you have to climb in the rear tire on the passenger side so high while the front is up. Once you get over... Is it like a two-wheel, opposite wheel? Yeah. Kind of like, oh, I, I, I'm good at that. Yeah, but and it's flipping you over. Ooh. like, But it's it's just, it's one of those ones where you're going to flop and you're still climbing. Yeah. And you're going to flop and uh, you're still climbing. And you're just trying... You know, if you can just get to it... The phrase, going to flop, is subjective. Th- this is true. <laughs> I thought I was going to flop a bazillion times. And I look at the video and it ain't even close. <laughs> so. The Jeep's level. Yeah. Your tire's flexed. <laughs> you're like, oh. Right. But yeah, Dude, so... We, we got to get like three or four cool dudes together. And light it up. Oh, we got just, two right here. And just work it. Yeah. Right. So we need one, <laughs> one or more. Two, one or two more. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. I got a tons, tons of yeah. and battery And people lights. Who, who just want to go play on it, like they don't, like I'm not trying to get damage either, but right. people who don't mind working it and like just playing on it for a while, we'll set up all the, like these crazy LED lights what's, everywhere. And, what's really weird is when you get in there though, there's not a lot of options to move around. Yeah. You're kind of in it. So. Yeah. If you, the slightest move, man, and it wants to go. Well, but you drove around, right? Uh-huh. So we could still have a winch line on. We like yep. you, we could make it safe. So we could put a winch line on and yeah. let you get back off and try again. Yeah, and do that a few Le- times. Leave like a foot of slack or a little bit of slack if I want. And yeah, like like yeah. Tony came up because I, you know, mm. a lot of times when they were pulling on me, I had to actually turn the Jeep on to be able to hold the brake. Yeah. And oh, yeah. with Tony, I didn't. He just barely tagged me. Like so, I, he was I think the closest of making it up. Richard was huge, the second. Huh? Yeah. So the, both of those guys have forty one fives and 40, like yeah. and like twenty four inch bellies or bigger. Yeah, huge, huge like length. Jeep belly angles. Players. I'm not. Re- I'm not referencing their bodies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that that's not put- far off. <laughs> <laughs> On both of them, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. So we get through that. Those those guys are cool though. We're yeah. just we're just teasing. You know? And that obstacle, I won't even try. It's gnarly. Damn. It's big and gnarly. And, and so your Jeep just is that where you broke a U joint or no? Mm-mm. That's that the cool. last. That's this the next one. one. The oh, next the one. Next one. So <laughs> goofing on him, I don't remember that last. The last one is not big. This one here was the you know a full JK's yeah. length tall. Yeah. Right. And this last one's more like four or five tall, four okay. or five feet tall. Yeah. And it's more like Anaconda, right? It's okay. like, it's just big Those and nice bouldery. little falls, a yeah. lot of stuff in the way. Yeah, no, cool. yeah, exactly. It's just a big bouldery waterfall. Damn. I love that we call them waterfalls. There's hardly any water in them ever. But, but that's how they're made, right? Yeah, true. Falling it is. Water. It, it's a different level of land and there's rocks that are there. You yeah. know? So at any rate. So it's um, a ledge climb. Exactly. But boulders. So this last mm. one, that's where I broke. I got up in there and I, and. You look at it and your brain says, oh, I want to go to the right and try to climb up the rocks. You know, like the theory of staying on top of all the rocks. Yeah. So you try to go over there, but you get wedged in and that's where I broke the axle shaft U joint. No problem, you know. So it just gets really bound up. So I know the line is far left, right? Okay. But now, I, I watched the videos of the last guys making it when I broke and they were way left, almost like bypassing the entire rock thing. When we got there, that we didn't do that. We actually, there's this huge granite line that you can follow. And if you can keep your driver's side tire on is it. like it, a white quartz line? Or like, is it like a... It's just a swath, and it's different than the other rock. Okay. So okay. it's whatever, I don't know yeah. if it's granite or what, but it's a different line. And it's straight. And it's probably 12 inches wide, right? Okay. So it's very obvious. So you get on that, and you're like, okay, cool. And, and you can see, you got to do a little bit of flexing. And you're, you're upright. The problem with that is, and you're, the problem with it is, is... The front's no issue, but where the two back climb, those two rocks are off about two feet, oh, so they don't no. climb even. And yeah. the same thing hits because now the front is light. Okay, you hit that rear tire and it pulls so the front just off. Spinning and, and it twists the body around. It pulls and... the front tire right into the right into the hole. Damn. So you got to back off and do it again. Back off and do it again. Till you have some traction. Yeah, and a little grip. Exa- until you can so or mm. start really far left. This is what I ended up doing. I went so far left, I missed that first rock, but that leans you really far to the right. You know, so yeah. I, I had actually made up my mind. I don't even care if I flop. Like, I'm going up this left side. And I don't, and I forget who was standing there spotting me. They're like, woo, dude, that doesn't look good. I'm not comfortable with this at all. And I was like, at the point, I had already made up my mind. Yeah. I'm going to lay it over. So, but it didn't. No, it uh, didn't because it hit the roll cage on the bar, on the um, ground. <laughs> so, so, this would be a good one for no doors. And- yeah, definitely. And I warned all those guys don't t- yeah. take doors and stuff. But, um, so anyways, I'm climbing up, climbing up, and the rear part of the C-pillar hit that rock. It leaned out, but I didn't feel it. I thought I hit the rocker panel. And then I got that front tire, both tires up on the ledge, and then it walked right up it. So then I'm standing there, and I had been making fun of these guys, playing with them, going, wait till you see the next one, dude. This isn't even the hard one. When we're on that last crazy one. So then 
but and I was goofing because it really wasn't as hard as the last one. So then Daryl walks up and he looks at it and he goes, "Oh shit, dude, this is way harder than the other one." And then he storms off, and I thought he was pissed off, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, I feel horrible about it." The um, that noise that I just heard <laughs> is that why you're laughing? <laughs> the fart. Uh, I heard a. <laughs> I was like, oh, the dog must be growling outside. The damn door. dog! Yeah. I was trying to ignore it, but you're beat red <laughs> laughing. So anyway, it's only a tiny ass room here. Uh, the um, but at any rate, so I get up on there. Daryl goes through it. Daryl did end up wiping out his tail light. Oh so, yeah, I, I saw the photos of that. Okay, yeah, he took my Twice, line, right? Yeah, I think so. But he's got corner armor at home. Yeah, I felt horrible. I know because the whole side was dented, and I was like, "He's like, no, I did that on volcano." So then I was oh, like, he "Cool." He did damage the rear quarter on volcano. Yeah, that, so the gatekeeper. I asked him, I was like, "You pissed off?" And he's like, "Sorry about that. I know that creeped me out too." <laughs> you touched my hands. The, should, uh, I think we just touched finger now. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough. I didn't get the creeper. It's not finger, gay. Did I? The what? No, you hit this oh, one. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, dude. So, anyways, yeah, we make it up. Daryl makes it up. He really wasn't mad. He just looked mad. Mm-hmm. And I felt bad. He's but got like resting grandpa face or something. like Resting bitch face. Yeah. Rest, <laughs> okay. I'm with you. So he gets up. Half the group. At this point, it's like five in the afternoon. We haven't even set up the scottles yet or the food or anything like yeah. that. So I'm, me and Dennis are trying to get everybody up. We're trying to get Steve to the front because he's got the scottles to start <laughs> cooking. And they got tents set up. They got the whole road blocked off. They got all this shit out. And we finally get up. But this is where I almost passed out. Oh, All I have is warm what? beer. I ran out of water. Damn. We were out there so long. Well, and you you didn't eat, right? So uh-huh. you rushed out of the house. I hadn't eaten. Know. Yeah. So and what, you you guys made food at four p.m. five p.m. Yeah. So, Damn. Yeah, but that, so I was hard. dude. Hard. I was blowing bubbles, man. I was like running up and down that stupid little obstacle because you could stack a rock to get them to be equal. Yeah. And then fucking Javier would come in there with his nine million to one or wait. Is two no. to one, yeah, two to one, <laughs> <or> whatever, <laughs> and throw the rocks thirty feet out of there. Damn. He ended up having to take the bypass out, so um, which I had to pull him up that. So I'm now running up and down the rocks. I feel like this is all about me. I'm running up and down the rocks, stacking rocks, trying to do them, jump in my jeep, drive over, yeah. drag him up the hill, yeah. run back, and then at one point I was climbing up that thing like the fifteenth time, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Everybody else is in the shade, got nice cold beers. Yeah. I'm out of water. Luckily. And Dennis is like, we're taking off. We're not going to stick for food. And he's like, Mike, you want some water? And he had like three really cold waters, which then by then somebody was cooking. Chris was cooking and everybody, dude, the food was amazing. Those guys always bring yeah. great food. So I had a little bit of food, some nice cold water, snapped right back out of it. Everything nice. was good. Fucking Dennis. <laughs> I tell him, him and a couple other people, I'm like, yeah, you just follow this out that way. Uh-oh. You just head that way. You know what I mean? Like keep the sun over here and yeah. head that way. You're going to, if you, when you run into the riverbed, go left. Yeah. Right. And the river goes all the way to the main street. Exactly. The, the river, that sandy river bottom. Right. And yeah. that river, it's not a little creek. It's a no, very it's, obvious river it's bottom. It's like 40, 50 feet right. wide. And it's sand, sand. So it's yeah. obvious when you get in it. Right. Yeah. So we hear them on the radio for like the next two hours. <laughs> uh, do, I think we take this left over here and the, their radio would go crackly and then come oh, back like super strong and <laughs> it yeah. get really strong we're like damn are they still we literally left and steve goes have you guys made it out and they're like we're airing up now we cooked ate, everybody's out and we're and we get out in like 15 minutes you know but it was a good ass day good tiring day that's awesome but uh yeah and i wasn't gonna will but it was so close to the house yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't even have to fix the the bearing or anything yet holy shit dude 56 minutes we ain't even talked about the go devil run yet we are back and we just decided the cameras are not going to let us do the second half. So look for a part two to this episode. That's right. For the Go Devil Run, or we'll just make it its own episode and well, it will come out. For people who don't know what the Go Devil Run is, tease it a little. Give us, give us like a highlight. What, like, what is it? Okay. And like, give us like a tiny teaser breakdown. Right. Quick ass breakdown. Go yeah. Devil Run is we had 21 flat fenders, bone stock. 40s and 50s has to be an original flat fender with a four cylinder engine, the Go Devil. Yep. And we did 165 plus miles of dirt. Damn. In three days. And so old school stock willies, yep. 30 inch tires or whatever. Yep. I'll give you a little intro here. I interviewed Drew on what his was. I'll, nice. I'll play that real quick. How fast do you think we could get through Crown King in our Jeeps right now? If we just, oh. no stopping, just hauling ass. No traffic, no issues, nope. like just straight through. Four hours, right? Took us, Booking. T- took us twelve. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. And I'm talking from the back way to Crown King, Lake Pleasant, yep. to Crown King, not yep. all the way through. Like, 
Yep, here we go. Ready? This is my interview with Drew and kind of what this is about. Taking you from the garage to the trail, live on the back road to Crown King on the Go Devil Run. We are currently in a 1951 51 Wheelies FJ Farm Jeep. 00001. Or maybe one or two less zeros. Anyway, I'm here with Drew Hutchins. Uh, Drew, <laughs> why do you drive a flat fender, Drew? Well... I'm a Jeep guy by trade, and I've always loved Jeeps. My grandfather had a Jeep just like this. Actually, it was a 47, I believe. And uh, I've always I learned to drive in a Jeep, and so I've always had Jeeps in my life. And uh, this run came up where it's basically bring a stock, old-school flat fender, and uh, I was like, I'm in. Nice. I'm in. So that's what's coming up next <clears throat> on the next episode. That's awesome. Right. And we love Drew, man. He he really got us like into some of the better wheeling, you know. Yeah. His JK, man, he we always used to think like it was so secretly built and he never admitted it. <laughs> you know, we're like, no way he does all that stuff without, you know, whatever yeah. we thought was required at the time, you know. But Yeah. And he did. He totally did on yeah. like stock axles and yeah. stuff. They weren't even chromoly. And then <clears throat> but we always we used to say we drew it at the end. Yeah. Where as you're about to not make the obstacle, the last thing you last ditch ever is just to pin it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. Good old Drew. Dude, That's it was awesome. awesome, man. And we were in this little ass Jeep and we're two huge dudes. We had it so packed up like the oh, Beverly yeah. Hillbillies, bro. Well, your camping gear, your food, your tools, right? A Everything. Spare tire. Yeah. It was there was so much shit and in that. No Jeep. space. No space, no. no. That's why he kept, he kept wanting me to drive. He's like, you can drive if you want. And I was like, dude, I got so much leg room over here without that. Because in this, I did drive it a few times. But with the steering wheel, bro, if you guys could picture, if you've ever seen the movie Gremlins, you ever yeah. see that movie? Yep. Oh, yeah. He's in that little race car through the department store, and he's all hunched up over the steering wheel, dude. Like, because like, there's no power steering. There's no power brakes. You're yeah, shifting. You're muscling everything. Everything. You're shifting constantly. We're on crazy hills. It has a foot starter. So yeah. you have a clutch, a brake, a gas pedal, and a pedal to start it, <laughs> right? So how many legs did you bring, dude? And no safety brake, right? <laughs> so he's trying to start it, trying to go back and forth, trying to pop start it on big crazy hills in reverse. And a few times I'm like, bro, just let me start it, man. So he's got the brake, the gas, and the clutch, and I start it with my other foot, and I'm pushing on it. And you got to get the angle right to push the button. Yeah. Oh shit, it was, it was fun, dude. That's awesome, man. So we had 21 total flatties or 21 total jeeps one flat fender 20 flat or tw one funny fender which is a wheelies but has a cj or has a curved front nose oh, yeah, yeah so it's just at the end of the year like 53 or 54 or something like that so we call it a funny fender 17 two a's one three a one three b and one m 38 so uh yeah and all stock basically all stock 31 inch tall tires non what? Were some like really nice, like rebuilt? Oh yeah, like Brian's. Brian's was really oh. nice. Brian and um, you think Bailey. anyone had a comfortable ride? No, <laughs> dude. You know what's crazy about him? Shockingly enough, I rode in a Samurai, Sean Samurai. Yeah, that fucking thing has zero flex anywhere. It just yeah. is the biggest. You feel yeah. every single jarring bump and everything like that. These are smooth, bro. Like yeah. shockingly smooth until you hit the frame. Would you do it? Because they have like a half an inch up travel. And um, oh. it was you, insane. Could you secretly run it on like some some badass like air shocks, like ORIs or something and like yeah. work it into the, into, and see, like disguise them, like color them like the Jeep? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, Trent put in an aluminum radiator, but he painted it black oh. and somebody caught it. You know what I mean? Like, and then if you caught it, you caught, you, you got, you got yeah. uh, hazed for sure. Yeah. And Ryan Miller. That's awesome. Painted it black. <laughs> yeah. And Ryan Miller has, um, he's got like, his shit is, there's all kinds of little trick shit all uh, over it. You know what I mean? A couple guys, he's got, except for, he's so, got a uh, RPM fab aluminum fucking steering on it. And we're like, what is this dude? Yeah. Cause it stood out like a turd. Um, are you still thinking about if another one pops up, are you buying it just to have? Dude. Yeah. So we could go. Yeah. So yes. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to do this too. Then after that first day, I was like, fuck flat fenders, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> that kicked our ass. And then by the end of the day, I'm looking again. Right. Yeah. Cause talk about a That's team fun. building experience and problem solving Damn. thing. Like, and on top of it, what's awesome about this is you can't, I'm probably going to end up saying this shit again next yeah. week too, but perfect. You can't just go any moron can't buy it because they got money and join this pack Yeah, because they will flat leave you behind, dude. You oh, have shit. to know your shit. We, at one point, 
I look back at Vern and I'm like, are we going the right way? And he throws his arms up. We have no idea. We don't even see dust for miles and we can see for fucking 20 miles. So we so are the groups all separated. They, yeah, they got separated and they would literally you good. Good. And you had to have your shit figured out, man. Like you had you to had, know you guys all had ham radios and stuff. Nobody, wired in. No ham radios. <laughs> no GPS. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no GPS. nothing, dude. We're Maps. talking nothing. Map. No map. We're just going literally, dude. I felt like an Indian. I'm down on the tracks <laughs> because we had directional you're looking, you're looking for tires. We had tire directional tracks. tires. Yeah. So it, no NDTs. Right. Which is like a radio. Everything was bias ply can only be going one way. So you could tell which way that track was going. Interesting. What would, would throw us off is sometimes they'd make a wrong turn and turn yeah. back, and you're like, oh, wait, whatever. So we're literally reading tracks, you know. And then, and then, dude, we're in a tunnel at one point under the I-17. Oh, we're, shit. we're in a tunnel. Downtown Phoenix? Uh, no, like um, oh. north of New River. We came oh, all yeah, back yeah, in yeah, through yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So uh, I found some, we got some really cool shit, dude. At one point, we're at Table Mesa. I just might have seen where we were looking for help because we had literally. A 400 yard climb and flat fenders in the middle stuck. We couldn't get up. And I'm like, is anybody out here right now? We need somebody with a V8 to get these things yeah. to the top. We didn't have enough rope, enough winch line, or anything like that. We ended up having to turn them around in the middle of the hill and run them back down. Damn. The um, So at any rate, uh, um, we're in this tunnel and we're working on a radiator. We have one radiator part working on it. They fucking have a siren. <laughs> they drive off. Whoop. <laughs> we're still there for an hour fixing this radiator. They just leave you, bro. You got to know your shit. Yeah. And so what's cool about it is you have to have some mechanical ability. Yeah. We, I lost track of how many times we took apart the fuel system, dude, to truck <laughs> on Drew's Jeep. Oh, on Drew's Jeep. On Drew's Jeep. Damn. Yeah. It so was what good. was mainly wrong with it? Like the pressure ended up being the gas can was just so, remember I told you we oh, tried to clean right. out the that's rust. Right. That's right. It was, it was clogged everything. We went through, Five or six fuel filters, fuel lines. Ended up having to get new gas yeah. tank while we're in Crown King. We had, dude, talk about an adventure, man! What an adventure! Damn. We had. Well, let, let's let's yeah. do it. Let's do a full episode. Do it right. We got to yeah. give this the credit it deserves because yeah. it was epic trip. Damn. So should my, we buy, should we buy a bunch of stock Liberties? Yeah, <laughs> dude, a Liberty would. Yeah. Now these fucking things are out will a Liberty, a stock yeah. will at Liberty. Yeah, they're animals, bro. They take a beating like you have no idea. That's true. There's a lot of plastic on a stock Liberty. It it come out pretty fucked up looking. Dude, I can't believe how good they will, man. And I can't believe how fast they fall apart. And I can't believe how fast you could fix them. Yeah. And I can't believe the amount of shit you could do to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so good. They're so simple. That's what's awesome about them. That's why I say, like, you could sell this as a fucking corporate gig. Hey, come learn team building and problem solving with us. We throw your ass in this ghetto ass Jeep and make you go 165 just, just put- miles. You get, you'd have to divide everyone up, huh? And do like one really good mechanic, like one of you in like a group of two Jeeps. And you get, those two guys got to stick together because. Maybe, you, maybe. Well, no, because then the other guy's not really learning. Yeah. You have to figure dude, it these out. These IT guys, they're not going to know how to fix shit. Problem solving, bro. You got to be able to figure it out. Like one time we had to clear the fuel tank or the, the carburetor. And I, I remembered after this happened accidentally, right? So it would idle. Just quick tidbit. It would idle, but you put it in the gas and it wouldn't, it would just die. Okay. It'd stall. Started back up, started back up. So we're trying to figure it out. And I'm kind of looking for leaks. And so, anyways, he kind of got it to rev a little bit. And my, and I was feeling around it and it sucked my hand to the carburetor and it started to run better. And then it was down to me. You can actually rev them and hold and cover it and it will suck the dirt through the carburetor. Whoa. If it, all the shit, because it was so dusty, dude. So we did that. We ended up doing that like 10 times on the whole trip. Like, but that Damn. became one of the fixes <laughs> on total accident, you know? Yeah. But I, I had remembered that you could do that huh. after it accidentally did it. And it worked. I know it sounds silly, but I learned so it on road. Tune in. I know. Right. <laughs> okay. Let's end this with a rant then. Cause this rant's oh, kind of sure. relevant. Yeah, a funny yeah. note. Let's there go with go. a funny note. I know we got a little bit of time. So I was listening to will and wine and whiskey today. All right. And Jason, he he had a rant. Normally it's Chris, but this yeah. time was Jason. Oh, yeah. And he was talking about situational awareness of people in the grocery store. And he was like, I think they were pretty hammered by that time because he was saying situational awareness. <laughs> and he was slurring all over. But he striked up the funniest fucking thing that happened to me at Fry's. And I might have said this before. Maybe I not. I haven't heard it. Okay. So his rant, though, was people just completely oblivious to you standing there. They're in masks. they got their stupid shit on or whatever. And he goes on his rant. Go over there and listen to it. This is the last one. I'm standing in fries. I'm fucking tired. It's the end of the day. I need to get peanut butter, right? 
So I go to the peanut butter aisle. Everybody's social distancing, trying to yeah. stay six feet away. This fucking guy is standing in front of the pe- peanut butter. He sees me there, but sort of. Well, at least I'm standing there. I'm not like a little okay. guy. Doesn't give two shits about what me doing. So I sneak behind him, trying to get around him. I, I know exactly what I need. Just step out oh, of the way. Oh, but he's standing directly in front of it, like super yeah. close. Like just glancing. He's like glassing over the peanut butter, yeah. right? Like, what the fuck? And he has a hat on. He's got sunglasses on. He's got a, like a bandana mask and everything yeah. on. All tucked in. You can't even tell if it's like the race of this person, yeah. right? So, which is irrelevant. You can't see the color of him. So, anyway... I sneak behind him. He almost backs into me. I sneak down in front of him. I grab my fucking peanut butter and I'm like, sorry, dude, I'm trying to social distance, but you're hogging the whole fucking space and I don't have all day. So I didn't say that. That's what I was yeah. thinking. I get to my cart and something about me feels this guy's eyeball on me. Right. So I look over at him and we have a full on stare down <laughs> for like 15 <laughs> seconds. You know what I mean? Okay. We're looking at me and, but I can't see. So you're see. not going to look away. I know I'm on him. Right. Yeah. And I don't have glasses on, are but he, I can't like, see him. Nope. Making, oh. I got the peanut butter in my cart and I take the breath to ask him, what's your fucking problem? Right. Cause this is a long ass hot day. I'm ready to go. <laughs> right. I literally go, I go, <gasps> and he goes, Mike, Uh, (laughs) i was was literally about to tell that guy we got a fucking problem bro (laughs) and he's all mike and i was like who are you and he pulls his glasses down and ended up being tim and marie marie's dad Uh, and i was like what the fuck i forget his name now but i'm about to chew his ass out dude (laughs) (laughs) and he just couldn't pinpoint who i was Uh, he had recognized me i didn't know who the hell he was in that disguise but how funny like you're all you have one whole different idea than this guy staring at you because he recognizes you. And you're uh, like, what the fuck, old yeah, man? Yeah, I was ready to slap him. <laughs> fuck this, dude. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny. So that was my Brent That's situation. That's why we, he is also known as Angry Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on, I'm going through this stupid shit. The other thing, too, I have to quit drinking these beers. I can't drink Ultra Michelobes anymore. You know why? Because people throw these out on the fucking trail. They, Whoever drinks so this. the same with Coors Original and Coors Light. No way. And- we started pointing it out, and nine out of ten beers is this beer on the trail. And I don't throw mine out, but everybody's giving me the stink so eye. So how is that related to Mexicans? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. It says Mexicans and beer up there. It doesn't say Mexicans. It says switch beers. Because of the Mexicans. At any rate, I love this beer, but I can't do it because it's making me look bad, even yeah. though I don't throw mine out, but I, yeah. I can't go out and collect everybody's. You know what I need? I need an industrial clampy picky up thing that's yeah. super long. You can buy them that are super short, but I'm going to be in the Jeep, and I want to pick it up while I, without getting out. Good point. So if you guys know where to buy one of them, send me a link, and I'll buy one, please. Long ass, super industrial, clippy, grabby thing. Yeah. All right. And on that note, folks, let's get the hell out of here. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, follow. follow.